board. Welcome to the TelePT Connections podcast. I'm Daniel Seidler. And I'm Adrian Miranda. And our very special guest today is the one and only David Sofer. Welcome, Dave. How you doing, buddy? How you doing? Thanks for having me. Of course. And thanks for coming back. Second appearance on the TelePT Connections podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is this the second? Is this the first uh, repeat? He is. Yes, I mean, right. he is. Dave is Dave is booked like for the next next couple of years. Every few months, he's already on the calendar. So, I hope you're I hope you're available, man. I hope you're still available. I'm, I'm here. I'm here. All right. Um, so since we last talked, you know, we were just chatting before before we hit record, and uh, you said a few things have been going on. Arthritis yeah, health is, so, is off, um, the, off the ground. That's right. So last time we spoke, I was just kind of pre-launch for my website, arthritishelp.info. And uh, since then, we've launched for uh, about a month. Um, uh, it's, been, it's been really well received. Uh, it's been a lot of fun, actually, for me to do. Um, the main thing, like the new content I'm putting out every week, I put out a new video, um, uh, an interactive live Zoom that people attend, but then I, I, I show the recording for everybody on how to do a few key movements to, uh, to help them um, move differently so they can feel better and um, and they post that and then I also post some uh, you know regular kind of text blog content my, my musings my thoughts about uh, all things uh, body and movement and, uh, and and arthritis and you know so far so good I'm really enjoying putting it out there and the people that have, have gone with it are uh, have given me some nice some nice feedback so I'm, I'm pretty happy so far I'm on the website right now <clears throat> and I'm scrolling and it looks good well, thank Just you. Just the landing. I'm like, all right, they, nice. they went all, to work since myself. we last talked. I did it all about. myself. I, I, I took a lot of time uh, and I built every single part of it, didn't outsource anything. Uh, um, so uh, it, was, uh, it was an education experience and uh, WordPress? I was actually pretty use? pleased with the way it came out. I was surprised, actually. What'd you use, WordPress? Uh, I use or... a site called Kajabi. Oh, okay. Um, uh, yeah, which is uh, kind of a, it's an, it's an all in one. They do a lot of different type of. Uh, hosting on their web along with other things so easy to use platform easy to use uh not as enough for um, a PT? inexpensive as uh your square spaces and your wixes because there's a lot of a lot of features um but uh it's more for uh, co course hosters people who are um, creating online courses which uh which i i, I have in development and um i will uh, launch uh, at some point in the future and i'm happy to come on in a few months and talk about yeah that. that's awesome <laughs> that's great um, and i noticed that you used the brick tv special it looks so good i did yes absolutely <laughs> about dr you. dave scroll down i'm like i was i was right next to that guy <laughs> in the red flannel so if you go and you scroll down the professional journey big uh, uh preview screen of a live tv daytime show where i was working at and i'm sitting right next you can't see me in the in the actual photo but <laughs> like that's awesome you're, you're my media man you sent me that picture i was like you know i look i look pretty professional in that picture i'm gonna nice. i'm gonna stick with it <laughs> nice. i don't want you to panic dave but it, your your audio is a little crackly is so it I'm let's sorry. see if we can let's see if we can fix it before we go any further i want you to sound perfect for the rest of the that, yeah there you better? go oh yeah okay i think so i think that sounds better nice All right, thanks, um so it's arthritishelp.info right correct and um, it's typically for for patients, people with arthritis necessarily, or like who would be your target audience? Yeah, so, you know, it's really for anyone who has joint pain. And, um, you know, my mission is to um, give people the resources that they can help themselves manage joint pain. And I feel like there's a lot of misinformation surrounding it. Um, there's a lot of myths that I go about debunking in my blog, such as you get arthritis because you're old or you get arthritis because you're weak. And there's a lot of negativity that surrounds it. Some people see it as, you know, it's, uh, it's not a death sentence, but it, you know, it's, it's, it's a sign of, of mortality, uh, sure. you know, um, and, and it's really, it really doesn't have to be. Um, so uh, what, I, what I really, my, my, my audience are people who have joint pain and want to feel better. Uh, they want to get back to doing the things that they love to do. And, um, and they, they completely can with a few kind of small tweaks here or there, some general things that, that are fundamental to everyone's movement patterns. And if you make those things just a little bit better, um, you can feel a lot better. It doesn't take much. It's just a little change in the right direction can often have this kind of huge ripple effect. 
um, throughout what you do. So I try to sure. do it's all all free stuff, free, free you know, taking the free advice, but it's free, yeah. free advice um, from from the the things that I've learned and collected over the decades that I've been um, treating folks with these problems. That's awesome. Um, you know, we, I think we we've all had this sort of discussion that like the human body doesn't come with it, an instruction manual. And a lot of people sure. just really don't know how to move. And particularly as they get older or um, a little less mobile, it becomes more challenging and it's more relevant, it's more important. And it sounds like that's what you're providing. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the fascinating thing for me is that um, our, our, we don't inherently, our bodies uh, don't choose the best path or the best mechanism to move. What, what we do, we do on repeat. So we actually do what's most familiar to us, whatever pattern we've developed. And we do this because our brains strive to be very efficient, very economical. And so, uh, and so we want to free up as much processing power for, for things that we need to analyze. If we have to think about every movement that we made, if we have to think about how we go about moving our bodies, we would be so, so um, inundated, so overwhelmed that we couldn't actually think to do anything else. So we develop patterns of, of movement, and sometimes these patterns can be inefficient or if done excessively, can be harmful. So, so what I work with people to do in my practice and also in this website is I get them to identify the patterns that they've developed within themselves. It's really a, it's really a self-exploration exercise. You realize yeah, what yeah. your preferences are, and, and then once you kind of can acknowledge those preferences, um, then you can start to change them and, and change takes time, but it's, it's small, it's simple. It's not aggressive. It's not about you know, pushing hard. It's not about getting strong necessarily. It's just about understanding the patterns that you have and why you have them and then learning how to unwind them and just do something a little bit differently. And sometimes that smallest change can be fundamental to changing how, how you move the rest of your body. Sure. And, and, with and, your and PTs know that of course, things as simple as getting in and out of bed sitting, sure. standing, walking, and most people are, are, are very unaware of how they do that. And if you can just like educate them on, make them more aware of how they're moving and how they can be doing that better. Uh, it sounds like, well, I mean, we all know that just from little changes make a big difference. The, the fun part for me is actually, I employ the same exact process yeah. when I treat my athletes, right? Yeah. If, I, if, oh, I'm, cool. if I'm watching, yeah. If I'm watching a runner run, a distance runner, a marathoner run, if I'm watching, uh, you know, a pitcher throw throw a baseball, it's the same exact thing. I look, everybody has a pattern when they move, and we look for what these patterns are. I boil it down, break it down to the fundamental pieces of 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 movement, right? And then and then we do a little. We see what's simple and what's difficult for that person. We retrain, and then we look, and then we. We, we re-examine a new, a new pattern. What if we did it differently? What if we did it a little bit this way, a little bit that way? Sure. And, uh, and it's, it's fun because, you know, I, I chose, you know, the arthritis population because, or the joint pain population, because I think they're vastly underserved. Everything on the internet is for, you know, is for me heads, right? I feel like everything is glamour. Everything's about, you know, looking better and feeling better and lifting big weights. There's sure. very little out there for regular folks, the folks that I deal with every day. Um, so uh, I really wanted to put something out for them, but it's, this is not like exercise for old people. This is the things that I do for everybody, for athletes and yeah. for joint pain, you know, all alike. Um, and it works effectively across the board because sure. it's fundamental to how we move as, as kind sure. of human. Are you familiar with uh, uh, Navigate Pain? We had, we had uh, Stephanie Wakeman and Megan Doyle on last week. And their, their, their project is similar, or at least their, their approach is similar in educating people on, on things they can do to alleviate pain. Um, mm -hmm. I, think, I think your message is a little bit different and you're, you know, you're focusing more on movement patterns. They're, they're focusing a little bit more on overall nutrition and wellness, right, Adrian? Okay. I, I got that right? Yeah. And, and just going upstream, to actually help people who start to have pain or are moving towards a chronic condition. Mm -hmm. um, not necessarily people with arthritis, but you know, who could mm -hmm. potentially have arthritis. Sure. Um, you know, that I think both, I think both angles are relevant, obviously. Oh, there, there are so many, there are so many facets to chronic pain. And uh, yeah. I've done a lot of um, kind of studying uh, on the chronic pain cycle. And I love the, NOI group out of Queensland, Australia, um, uh, David Butler, Laura Mosley, 
and yeah. and they go they look at chronic pain from uh, from the from a brain perspective how the brain creates the perception of pain in the body and I've really I've really embraced that that was introduced to me about 10 years ago or so oh yeah maybe more maybe maybe 15 I, and I uh, and it really <laughs> and it really it really worked its way into my practice I found it so useful and it, it really kind of helped to frame a lot of um, the stuff that I'm doing here, even though my focus is movement and their focus is, is, is some, it's some, to some degree thoughts, but it's more neurological, more with, with how the brain processes. Sure. It feels like the previous guest was looking more at, you know, um, uh, life factors like nutrition and, and sleep cycles and all those things, which are also yeah. hugely important when it comes to pain, all, all important facets. And you never know which is going to be the right key that kind of opens the, the door for you, but they all kind of come together in that, that same they call less to create how we feel every day. It's, it's yeah. pretty remarkable, actually. Yeah, I've been um, I've been researching a little bit recently on sleep and how it relates to recovery. Essentially, mm -hmm. um, do you just I don't know if it's related to your to to arthritis help or not? But then, do you give her uh, give any background on that? Um, so I would I'm by no means a sleep expert, but. Uh, <laughs> I think it's it's As fascinating. PTs, more you, have more to be, stuff. you have to be an expert in everything. But more, more, more and more stuff is 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 coming out about yeah. sleep. If you look at sure. um, your your top athletes, uh, so many of them are trying to get twelve hours of sleep a day, especially when they're training for That's a couple. Uh, you know, there was a um, I was watching one of the the HBO um, uh, series Hard Knocks. And they had JJ Watt, and he would he had bed. Now again, he's a top guy, so he do whatever he wants. So he had a bed somewhere in the training camp, and then he would just sleep whatever, like for an hour, whenever he wanted. And he was trying to get 12 to 13 hours of sleep a day. Um, That's incredible. The the, the, the ramifications of sleep. But actually, a month ago, watched a master class on 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 sleep. So it's hmm. funny that you brought it up. But the, you know, sleep for mood, sleep for anxiety, depression, sleep, uh, and sure. how it relates to chronic pain. In, in acuity, in in um, in, in um, your ability to focus throughout the day, it was, it's really it's to your to your overall health and life expectancy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't I don't know if there are any I don't know if there are any studies out yet, but I'm sure sleep and like the the, the amount of sleep that you get has something has a lot to do with aging. And and aging aging well, uh, aging comfortably. It's, sure. it's the amount of sleep. It's also the regularity of the sleep um, sure. and the quality of the sleep. All those factors really combine. Um, you know, I, I, I'm I, by no means I'm that guy who's like, oh, you know, it's 10 o'clock. I'm off to bed and I wake up and I get my eight hours. <laughs> Unfortunately, I wish I were that disciplined. Um, I, I am I not, uh, despite the knowledge, I, I'm not the best. <laughs> not the best patient, I suppose, but, uh, but the, the science behind it is remarkable. And it really helps me to cope, to understand how people have their kind of good days and bad days with their joint pain. I just actually wrote a blog post about it on my site about nice. what goes into good days and bad days um, and how the same stimulus can elicit a different response. So yesterday I went up the stairs and I felt fine. And today my knees are killing me. What's going on? It must be something that I did. Usually people's first reaction is to hate on themselves. It must be something I did. I must screw it up. I must be getting weaker. Right. I must be getting worse. It's just tear themselves apart. Um, but a lot of times, if you dig back, it's like, how did you sleep last night? Oh, actually, I didn't sleep. How much stress were you under? I got into a fight with my wife. Oh, okay. All these things come together to determine how people feel. Um, and, uh, you know, it's nice to see that more and more of these, you know, I, I suppose holistic solutions are starting to be borne out by the science and really accepted uh, in, by the public and, and Western medicine. It's fantastic. Yeah. So two things on that. First of all, I, th this by no means is science. I, I read it somewhere and I, I remember seeing it two or three times that um, sleep tends to affect people, not the day after, but the second day after like a bad night's sleep. Oh, that's interesting. Like mentally. And maybe, maybe the point was that it's just cumulative, but I'm pretty sure it was like, you know, particularly for athletes, they tend to be a little more worn down, not necessarily the day of, because they you sort of get like oh. that adrenaline rush or whatever it is to, you know, hormones that kind of keep you going for a day. But by the second day after a bad night's sleep, you're more likely to feel the effects. That's one thing. The other one is I always ask patients um, what they ate in the last 24 hours. Oh, that's good. My knees Brilliant. were burning, you know, or, right. or my ankle swell, my, my ankle swell up 
swelled right. up, even though like I didn't do anything. Well, what did you do? What did you eat? Did you have a big, right. um, you know, salty Chinese food meal the, right. the, the night before? Did you eat a lot of sugar at the movie? You know, a lot of candy at the movies, things like that. I think, I think those are, those are factors that we kind of, we don't necessarily focus on very often as PTs where we're thinking, usually thinking more mechanical or sure. like, um, you know, utilization way. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think nutrition probably has more of an effect than, than we give it credit for most of the time. Uh, absolutely. And I think when you can illuminate that to somebody, you know, I talk about patterns of movement, but there's patterns in life, sure. right? And, and, you know, habits, I suppose we call them. And so uh, when, when you can bring someone's habit that maybe they're absent to and, and show them that there's kind of a, an effect there, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty remarkable. You know, it can, it can really make a, make a change. But yeah, uh, people don't. People know. People think about food nutrition as being healthy, but they don't really think about it. I don't, I think in like how they feel, you know, how they feel yeah. like in that moment or the next day. Yeah, and I, I think it is. It is pretty enlightening to a lot of people to hear that something they ate can legitimately affect their 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 joints within like the next twenty four hours. Yeah, their immediate their immediate feeling or, right. or near immediate feeling sure. because of the repercussions. Um, but it's so hard to pin it to one thing. Well, I well that's true too. I picked like, yesterday and my knees were fine today. It's, you know, yeah. there's so many things that go into that, that perception of pain that it's so hard to distill it down to one thing. Uh, and that's why when I, when my, when my patients come in and they have that bad day, I tell them, you know, think about any obvious thing that might've brought it and yeah. if nothing comes to mind. Put it in the back. All right, it's a bad day. Yeah, the next yeah, one yeah. will be better. Bad days come, bad days go. They're inevitable, right? But tomorrow will be better. Now, if you have a bad week or a bad two, now that's that's something that we have to be concerned about. That's something that we're going to talk about. Sure. These flare-ups tend to be 24-hour, 48-hour cycles, but they shouldn't last more than that. But you know, you have a bad day, put it behind you. Tomorrow is going to be better, and let's just you know move move forward. Yeah. Don't beat yourself up over it. And I think I think your your message is it's really it's it's cumulative. It's everything. It's like, it's the physical, it's the sleep, it's the nutrition, it's the mental and emotional, all of those things together factor in. And if you can make small changes in any one of them or each of them, it's gonna make a big difference in how you feel physically. Absolutely, the, the, the practice that I do and what I'm doing on the Arthritis Help website yep. uh, is really looking at um, movement, but we kind of do it in a way that is, uh, dare I say, meditative. Uh, it's very introspective. So, so you're you're taking 30 minutes and you're kind of looking within yourself and you're sensing how your body moves in a very, very it, it was intense but intentional in an intentional way and uh, in a way that we don't usually get to take time to focus inward for yeah. for so long and 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 even doing small things, even just sometimes doing you know, breathing exercises and thinking about our movements with breathing, there's this kind of, I don't know, restorative feeling. I, when I do the practice myself, not just kind of explain it to everybody else, I just, I'm always so amazed. I'm like, I just feel kind of just generally lighter. I just feel kind of generally better, easier to move around physically, but also mentally, emotionally, because it is like taking like 30 minutes of meditative time. Um, so it's kind of cool that you can, you can do a little bit of both uh, at the same time depending on how you how you manage yeah. that yeah yeah and uh, i've done i've done yoga over the years um not not too much recently but one of the things i've always liked about yoga is your your expected at least a good instructor will typically expect you and and really help you focus on your individual body parts and how you're moving and doing that sort of interest introspective um it's like an inventory check mm -hmm. right um so like where did you get the premise from or like what school of thought does that come from? Would you, would you just make it up yourself? <laughs> you know, um, uh, I've been, I've been blessed to have had so many different, uh, influences, great influences, uh, in my life. Um, and, uh, actually on my about me page on my site, uh, I really go, or, or was it on the methodology page or the about me page? I talk about the professional influences I have that brought me to this, but um, I've definitely been very influenced by uh, Feldenkrais, Feldenkrais work, nice. um, uh, uh, awareness through movement, um, 
Uh, I've taken many courses at the Feldenkrais Institute on West 23rd Street in Manhattan with Marek Wyshynski, who's a co-founder there, a brilliant yeah. therapist and a brilliant practitioner. Yeah. Um, he has really opened my eyes to a lot of connections in the body. Uh, and then uh, David Butler from the NOI Institute in Queensland, Australia, um, just doing amazing work, you know, pioneering in, in chronic pain and pain science um, and how to manage people's pain uh, on both a physical level, but also a, um, that pain is not just physical on, on all I the other. cognitive, levels. really, right? J just like, like mentally connecting with your body. Certainly, it, but it's right. it's cognitive. So it's co cognitive is kind of the mind and the thoughts, but it's also physiological in the chemicals, right? That actually ah, okay, yeah, create yeah. different receptors. You can actually think pain into your sure. into your body. Or uh, out, one of, the or out of your body. One of the things he talks about. So you've got the. If I can get a little sciency, honestly, if I can if I can drop the word homunculus, anytime I can say homunculus, I'm having a good day. Yeah. So uh, the homunculus is, homunculus. The, is the is the brain's map of the body, right? It's it's we have a map in our brain for every part of our body, and we dedicate a certain amount of real estate in that brain to 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 certain parts of the body. So the tip of your finger gets a lot more real estate in the brain than the tip of your elbow because you're touching things all the time. But if you're a braille reader, you have three to five times larger real estate because your fingers, because you're spending so much time um, thinking about how perceiving the feeling in your fingers. Now, if you have chronic back pain and you're always thinking about your back and every movement, every movement you, you check in with your back and your mind, you create more real estate for your back, but you also create more um, basically pain channels, uh, allowing the opportunity to search for pain. Um, creates that idea, hypersensitivity of the yeah. nervous system yeah, creates that pain. So there is thoughts, but it's also, it's not, it's all in your head. You're going to think about it. It's actual physiological changes, which is fascinating to me because if we can change physiologically for the worse, we can change physiologically for the better. So there's so much that we can do. Totally. There. And, and great, great imagery. I, I, first of all, the, the humunculus is, I mean, one of my favorite, like, diagrams or infographics or whatever you would call it from, yeah. from PT school. Um, but to think of it as, as like portions of your brain actually grow or develop more based on your usage and your, pri your prioriz prioritization. Um, that's pretty fast. You know, we, I think we've all heard like pe um, people who are blind tend to have a better sense of, of hearing than, you know, people who can see because, because they have to and very similar to, to reading braille. I mean, that makes makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I, I would even say that awesome. I'm not sure if it's a better sense or it's a more acuity. They're more in tuned to what they hear, sure. whereas we're more likely to filter out. So it's not that they can hear more, they just are listening better. Um, sure. and, and, and that's what it is. It's about, it's about taking the skills that you're, the tools that you already have and getting better at using them. And so if the you know, blind person does that with their ears, that's what I'm trying to do with people's bodies. Like there's already, people have so much potential already within them. Yeah. And all I'm trying to do is navigate, show them how like, if you just move what you got, you don't have to be any better than you are right now. You just have to know how to move yourself a little bit better. And, and you can do so much, you can do so much more. And it's great when people recognize that it's really powerful actually. Yeah. Adrian, comments? I mean, you guys went down the PT rabbit hole of <laughs> we're psychologists, nutritionists, sleep. <laughs> How much can we cover in a, in, in, in a half hour? It's all relevant. And, you know, on a certain level, it's, it's fairly simple. But, you know, it's also deep science. I mean, it, you know, Dave said homunculus. I mean, there, <laughs> there's, um, there's a lot to it. And, and I, I really I appreciate the fact that, you know, what you're saying about the, uh, the ability to actually build build your brain essentially right like build those pathways and and develop areas of of your nervous system that are going to be more healthy as opposed to less healthy or less you know debt or more detrimental you know? yes we can we can create we can create the to some degree you know um uh, how we feel about our surroundings through our thoughts and through our intentions obviously you know, um, there are serious clinical issues, you know, anxiety, depression, things that you can't just sure. change with your perspective that require medication. I'm not trying to, to, um, to minimize that, but uh, outside of those serious, you know, um, 
pathological issues, there's so much that we can do within ourselves to, to just improve a little bit of what, of what we have. Yeah. Um, a a so friend of mine has been, has been going through um, some depression issues and he went to uh, um, I think a clinic at Mount Sinai and they have prescribed um, virtual reality goggles. Oh, wow. And like to, to essentially, and, and like, uh, I think it's a, like a meditative um, uh, program, essentially. I'm not sure the details of it. We haven't talked about it much, but the whole idea is basically to, to reprogram his neural pathways, essentially, and wow. settle his, um, I, think, I think it has a lot to do with the, like his autonomic nervous system. He's just hypersensitive. Ultimately, right. you know, he, he, he's constantly system. in a sense of like fight or flight. Right. Mm -hmm. And the premise is that 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 sort of um, uh, input is going is going to calm that down. Yeah. You know? what, a, what a challenging way to, to live. Um, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And anything that can downregulate that nervous system. Yeah. You know, that's that's a, VR is amazing because it's so immersive that it, it, it's, it's so real immediately tricks your brain. Yeah. immediately when you put on those goggles, it tricks your brain into thinking you're, you're somewhere else. To the point people run into walls, they forget that, you know, you know like, uh, or they think they're standing on the edge of a cliff, even though they know they're in their living room. The, the brain immediately takes that visual stimulus mm -hmm. and extrapolates it. Um, so yeah. I think that's uh, in, in, incredible. Um, uh, I, would, I would recommend all you go to uh, VR World in uh, Midtown Manhattan. And the first thing they put you on is a plank 50 stories up in the air <laughs> and you know, you so look crazy. at the wooden plank it's like on the floor. It's like a two by four long enough for your shoes uh, to fit plenty of space. And you walk maybe like six feet and uh, you see, you're like, Oh, this can't be a big deal. And me knowing that I was expecting you, that. Do they I actually, they have before. you do that. They have you do that without the goggles on first. Uh, yeah, they, you can, you look at it, you can stand on it, you can walk and realize, okay, no big deal. You can't That's fall awesome. off. And, and then you put the goggles on. Yeah, and like this is something that was like I've seen it before. I, I heard about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went there and I was like, okay, great. Like, you know, this will be fine. I've already seen it before. Can't fool, can't fool fool. Adrian. Put those on, take that step. <laughs> and I started sweating. Like, there's <laughs> no way around it. I was like, oh my gosh, it's crazy. And then you literally, they tell you to keep walking and you have probably like another four steps, but like in the, in the VR thing, you're like, you know, you're literally about to walk off the edge. And you look over the edge and you can look down and they take one more step. Like you have more space run, and then you fall <laughs> and it goes black and you're like, Oh my gosh, it's crazy. But it, it is true. It, it's crazy how the, how the mind can play tricks on us and release chemicals that literally alter our, our, our physiology. Um, and I think, you know, I, I think those NY guys, they start off with back, but then they, they're starting, I think mostly Adrian Lowe is more extremity based with arthritic stuff that it can happen in your, bone on bone knee when it's really you, people have had bone on bone uh imaging and they have severe pain and they do the uh type of noi training that they do and then the pain reduces it's wild it's not just like the central in the back it's actually the periphery and, and arthritic joints it, it, it is amazing how different people perceive pain differently or perceive mm -hmm. physiological changes differently or anatomical changes differently um i mean i've had so many patients come to me and you know, my doctor says they'll come to, the, I, I had, I had a couple of patients at one point that came to me with like right knee pain. And they said, you know, my right knee has been killing me, but my left knee, my doc said the left knee is actually worse yeah, on x-ray. Yeah. yeah. Like, that was an 80 year old happen? man's knee, you know, it's the, <laughs> right, right. Like the left knee is bone on bone. I don't even feel a thing. It feels great. The right knee's killing me though. I don't know. I don't know how to explain that, but I mean, I think the point is that like there, there are definitely patients who have radiographically really bad arthritis or, or degeneration and they they're perfectly fine like they're functioning yeah. and they're not in pain they're just that you're that the you know there's more to pain than just physically what is happening yeah, in your I guess body that's definitely you, the can, point. you can be bone on bone and be pain free and yeah. and when people get when people get these bad images they go through this uh, what they call catastrophization, right? There's, sure. there's no cure. It right. can't get any better. You know, how am I ever going to feel better? This is bad, you know? And then they go down that, that, that bad path, that path of anxiety that, that 
ratchets up the nervous system that makes them think about their knee more, which gives yeah. more real estate to the brain of what we're thinking about. And now we're in this cycle where we're only perpetuating these things that facilitate more and more pain. We just need to break that one way or another through movement, through, yeah. through whatever it is, I, I, but mostly I, through hope, through educating people yeah, and letting yeah. them know that there's, there is hope. There is more than what, what, what you think will more than what is on the image. There's a yeah. lot more. I, I've been there myself, you know, sort of, I guess on the patient side, you know, sure. like a, like a herniated disc in my back. And I was like, mm. this is it, you know, it's, I'm, 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 my, my, my leg is going to be numb forever. And you know, it's, it's it, now that I had this injury, it's always, it's only going to get worse. And I really had to like, talk myself out of it. Isn't it amazing how quickly our minds go to forever? Yeah. Isn't it amazing? Right. Like yeah. you get a pain and like, and, and, you know, you're, you're an educated guy, you know, this better than anybody else, but you get something you're like, well, it's forever now. Yeah. That's the rest of my life. And then two weeks later, you're like, wait, which leg was it? I forgot. But in that moment, <laughs> our brains go to forever and you had the wherewithal to talk yourself out of it. But like yeah. you said, people take these things differently. And if you really focus on forever, uh, you can make it so, uh, you know, you can will that into Definitely. existence. Definitely. Well, that's why education is so important. Because I mean, who hasn't as a PT, who hasn't had a patient who has had a condition like that for six or eight weeks or longer, and they basically progressed to more of a chronic state. And now it's even harder. I mean, like, you know, the, the changes have occurred now, particularly in the, in the neural set, in the neurological system, where they're they, they've been convinced that it's forever and they basically made it happen physically, not, not blaming the patient, but, you know, because of their lack of knowledge or whatever else in the situation there, it's, it's much more severe. So how do you, how do you deal with that? Like how, how, do, how do you manage that? It's still step-by-step, step, right? But yeah, you, you go, so, you know, uh, I want to, my mother, great Roslyn Sofer, right? Uh, physical therapist, funding mayor, educator, you got to say that again. You, you, you were a little crackly. Say that again. <laughs> Rosalind Sober. Yeah. Physical therapist, phenom, uh, and uh, educator, practicing clinical practice for 55 years, still practicing, still putting in her 10 hour days in the clinic like a lunatic, teaching nice. her to college. She would always say to me, We love her for she, that. She would always say to me, um, Teaching is learning because she's been teaching forever. Teaching is one. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I've really taken that, but um, I kind of expanded it going, and learning is healing in our profession. Mm. So if, if somebody can understand what's going on with them, then it's no longer happening to them. They're not being afflicted by it. They are, they are a part of it. They're a participant. They can understand what's happening. And when you're no longer a victim of the pain, but you're an analyst of the pain, perhaps, or you know, um, a, a scientist, or you're, you're understanding what's happening. It demystifies it. It takes the things out. It makes it a little bit less um, dangerous for you. And once you take out that danger, um, then you have that ability to go forward. Uh, um, David Butler, again, who I quote, quoted before from uh, Queensland, he talks about the dims and the sims. The dims are the dangers inside of me, and the sims is the safety inside of me. And so, and so when you feel that you have a bad back, when you are going through your disc, that disc suddenly became a danger inside of you. Yep. And our job as practitioners is to have people find the safety inside of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and what's got, got so question? What's been the experience with people who've come to your website or you talk to like what's been the feedback even though there's you know whatever whatever number what's your feedback so far uh so the feedback's been been pretty positive um uh, again we just launched so i don't have a huge a huge number but hopefully more in the future when did um, you launch uh it was about a month ago uh, okay. maybe maybe five weeks something like that um, but I mean, the feedback has been great. People are really, uh, excited to do the exercises when they do them. Uh, I hear they're, you know, they tell me that they're, they're feeling good. They feel that they can understand them. I still have some technical things to work out, get my video a little bit tighter and, and, and everything. But, um, they, even my mom took a class just on Tuesday and uh, she is the harshest critic. And, uh, she said, no, pretty good. Some new stuff, but she wasn't even aware of. So I was very, the mom feel of approval. Um, but, uh, but it's, it's been going well and I'm really excited because uh, I believe it can turn into so much more and excited to see where, it, where it goes in the future. Yeah. So um, what's on the website? Like what, what can people find on there? So, uh, on the website, I mean, the, the, the tools, the resources that people can find immediately, uh,
next section, you will get, um, you'll see the list of the, 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 the blog posts that I've written that talk about all sorts of topics from understanding why arthritis doesn't happen to you because you're old, about um, understanding why you have good days and bad days, uh, understanding, um, what was uh, some other ones? Oh, uh, interpreting MRI results and when you should be scared and when you shouldn't. Uh, a lot of stuff. So basically, it's the questions that people have asked me over decades that I've given answers for over and over and over again. I just now put them in a form so people can just find them on their own. And then you'll also find on that blog, you'll find uh, videos of all of the um, live sessions that I've done. So you can feel free to jump on. Usually it's Tuesdays at noon. Um, you can sign up right on the site. You just need to sign up once. You'll get an invitation and you can come and join the Zoom and be with me live and ask me questions afterwards. Or you can just watch the recordings um, and, uh, and yeah, try some of the exercises yourself or, or, and see if you like it. Really, it's movement retraining or lessons more than exercises. Yeah. Um, but uh, that's there. And then there's all, if you want to know more about me, it's all there. If you want to know about the methodology and how it works, that's on there too. Um, all that stuff. But the, the stuff that I think people, you know, what they're going for, the stuff that's useful is pr pretty much in that blog section. That's great. Um, and then, yeah. What's one more question. So what's the overall vision? Like, where do you, I'm sure you have like 10 steps ahead. Like what's the <laughs> next steps? I, I mean, so, so really, it's funny because, you know, I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur as a private practice owner, you know, you want to go there, but my, I've really tried to push that into the background a little bit. And I'm really just like, what can I do that's going to be best for people? How can I just serve people out there, especially in COVID, especially when there, you know, there's, there's not as much out there for people. How can I, how can I help? And I thought, all right, I'm just going to put, I'm just going to answer the questions that people ask me all the time. I'm going to give them tools on how to do things and how to execute. And, and I'm just gonna let that turn into whatever it turns into. And um, you know, if it just winds up being me and you know, 20 people every week, I'm cool with that too. That'll be nice, that'll be fun. Um, but hopefully I would love to be able to reach a, a larger mass of people because I think there's good stuff here that people can really benefit from and can help their lives. And, um, and I would love you know, to be able to, to do more, to, to create more videos, to create more content. Um, I'm, I'm developing longer courses, like six week courses on specific issues that are, you know, just based on the knee and hip, just based on posture, just based on low back pain. So that way, if people want more than just kind of these little snippets that they can do something that's a full curriculum for like six weeks or eight weeks with me, two days a week, where I'm teaching them the science right? Because again, learning is healing. So I'm teaching the science just like I teach my students in the PT programs I teach at. Um, and then we're going through exercises or lessons together, movement retraining activities. So you learn, you do, and then you ask questions. I'm there for the Q&A. And those would go out over six or eight weeks and, and see how that works. And what I really want to do is I want to gather data uh, uh, pre and post and then following that and just see if, um, you know, how people improve or not, uh, you know, how much can they get over time and see how I can tweak it and, and make it even, even better for people. So, I mean, that's, that's, that's the vision. It's not so, um, I don't know, uh, businessy, I suppose, but it's, it's really what I'd like to see this turn into. That's pretty, well, that's, that's a, pretty solid. It's, it's tight. Huge it's, vision. It's very focused. Um, <laughs> no, I'm not surprised. I had a feeling you had that in you. <laughs> how are you collecting data and what data are you collecting? Oh, so the, the data would have to be it, once I launch the courses. So yeah, okay. because the courses are really, you know, the the, the blog stuff is kind of one off. You, you, you do it, you don't do it. But the courses are really, and it's really, it, it's really taking people through a progression from the basic basics all the way to the more complicated things and, and helping them along the way where they get the hiccups. So I would be using, um, uh, you know, simple things, pain questionnaire, lower extremity functional scale, um, okay. uh, fear avoidance, um, fab Q. Yeah. Uh, it's just a couple of questionnaires to see what people feel like and overall satisfaction. And let's see how they feel on day zero, right? Yeah. How they feel after the course and then maybe how they feel six weeks after if they're kind enough to continue to give me their feedback. Sure. Um, uh, and then, you know, uh, validate it with data and, you know, if we could, if we could publish and turn this kind of thing into something that's even larger, you know, with verified data, that, that would be, that would be an amazing, yeah. I would love to see that yeah. because I would love to get this out to, to more people. So changing speeds a little bit. Yeah. 
nothing too drastic. Um, I, I just want to know about your process, um, particularly when it comes to blogging. Blogging is, is it's easy to write a couple of blogs. Yeah. It's really hard to write a weekly or daily blog. Yeah, yeah. Um, the people who do it daily, all the credit to them. They're God's I children. No I don't know how they do idea. it. <laughs> I have no idea. I've done I've done weekly blogs. I've done it a few times in my career, and every time I do it, I typically just burn out. It's it's yeah. a lot of work. It's a lot of work, and it's it's exhausting. I mean, writing is hard. Um, it, it, what's you, what's your process? So. Um, I'm, I'm still refining it because I'm new, but I've, I've put a mandate to myself that every week I'm going to release. So I have some deadline pressure that I self-impose. Um, and, and really the importance is the inspiration, right? Well, it's hard to do. Uh, I want to, I know it's, I know it's necessary for, for the long vision that, that, that I expressed for, for, for the things that I want to do. Um, the technical process, I try to write like four or five at a time. I try to get into a good headspace, a good writing mm -hmm. space, and I can hammer out, you know, four or five. So now I'm good for a month and I don't have to stress about it. So right. if I can write, that's what I do. Um, my live sessions are obviously live, so I can't do those in advance. So I do them every time, but that kind of energizes me because I get to kind of connect with, with my people. Um, yeah. but, uh, but I, and I listen, you know, it makes me listen a little more intent, intently in the, in, uh, in the clinic and I, I'm like, here's a question that I ask. This is a question I get all the time. All right, I've put that in my scrapbook. You know, this is, this is what it's gonna, it's gonna be. So I'm sure that I'm, I'm writing this week. Uh, I'm gonna be writing about the four keys to movement retraining, um, the, the four phases really of movement retraining. Yep. Um, I'm gonna be doing, uh, I'm gonna be doing a whole video session on sit to stand, uh, how we get out of chairs and what, what it entails and, and how you might not be doing it the way maybe the easiest way. Um, uh, oh, there was one other uh, one that I had for my blog. You know, sometimes even simple things that people ask you, does the weather have an effect on, on, on your pain? Sure. Uh, you know, what's better, heat or ice? God, I get that one. It's the, it's the least consequen consequential question in the whole thing, but it's the one I get probably the most, so might as well address so what's your, it. What's it might your answer? Dave, it might I'm just be you, a three-word blog. I'm like putting you on the spot. What, what's your answer? What's, what's better, heat or ice? Heat or ice, like, yeah, whichever makes you feel good. Whichever makes you feel good, that's the, yeah, one, that's the one to go I think with. that's the only answer, really. And that's kind of what the science says, too. Yeah. So, uh, so that's yeah, a really I could, short I could, blog. I write 600 words it's about It's a really it, short I could, blog. <laughs> I could turn that into 600 words, or I could just say, yeah, do what you want. Yeah, but so my process is bulk writing trying to be inspired by the long vision and really using my patience as my inspiration to, to, to answer the questions that, that I think people have asked me or people are afraid to ask or people don't have really the answers to um, out there on the internet. Yeah. You know, it's not so easy to find this kind of stuff. It's not well, Google stuff. It's easy to find it, but it's not always accurate what you find. Well, there so, is that. I mean, that's what's so relevant about what you're doing. You know, try, try to find out why your arthritis sometimes you have good days and sometimes you have bad days and, yeah. and see what you find when you Google it. There's nothing comprehensive there, nothing. Okay, yeah. And, you know, you'll just get sold some pills or powders or, 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 powder or whatever. It's, it's, it's that is that is typically what you find when you, when, when you uh, Google pain, you know, back pain, wrist pain, uh, neck pain, whatever, you're yeah. going to find pills, powders, and braces, and things with copper in them. False, false claims. Um, Snake oil. Uh, yeah, for, from, from, from predatory companies that are trying to make money off of people desperately looking for help, willing to try anything. I, and, I like that. Um, We're going to put that as a, that's a tagline for somebody. <laughs> yeah, go negative. Um, <laughs> but it's true and it's frustrating. And it's actually some of my motivation and some of the reason why I'm putting sure. all this stuff out there at no cost, because I just want people to see that there's a better way um, and yeah. that they don't need whatever the cure du jour is. Um, you know, it's all within you. If you understand how to use it, you can be better just within yourself. So what do you think about gravity boots, Dave? <laughs> gravity <laughs> boots? I, I mean, inversion <laughs> tables? I actually like inversion tables. I, I do too. I love inversion tables. I'm making a joke. But um, I've had patients with like uh, like post-stroke who are like, you know, should I should I be on uh, should I use a gravity uh, inversion boots? I'm like, maybe that's right. not the best treatment for you. <laughs> but 
Um, no, but there, I mean, you know, the, the, the solutions out there are, they're, they're infinite. And the reality is that some are, some are pretty good for some people, you know, um, most, most people will come to you and say, my friend used a, a, a knee right. brace and it solved all her knee problems. Um, should Remember, I get, should I get the same knee brace? Everything, anything works 10% of the time. Anything <laughs> works 10% good. of the time. Right. So, you know, you know, take a teaspoon of sugar to cure your whatever, 10% of the people, it will work for them, I promise you. Um, so, so things that work for some people, maybe they're in that 10%. And, or maybe they just found the right solution for whatever reason it was the right thing for them. But yeah. remember that pain is so, is so multifactorial yeah. um, that, you know, that, that those, those one-off solutions, it's, it's odd that they're going to address all of these things. Um, sure. and, and if it works for you, God bless. I love it. You know, great. Um, but, uh, it doesn't work for most. Um, yeah. and those are the people who I'm, I'm trying to reach. Yeah. And I mean, that's been proven in so many, uh, studies and, 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 uh, anecdotal stories, you know, things like, um, decompression surgeries or spinal fusions, um, for some people it works, some people that's all they need and they yeah. never have back problems again. But for a good percentage of people, they get some relief maybe for, for a couple of months and they're back to where they started. Um, and there is no one, you know, you could say physical therapy is a better solution. It's not the only solution also. And right, it it's more therapy. comprehensive what you're saying. Um, yeah. Uh, and, you know, the people for whom that one solution works, you know, uh, you can have what we call nociceptive pain, pain as a result of physical stimulus. If I pinch you, you feel pain, right? Yeah. That's a no susceptive input. So for people that are having their pain that is based very much on that mechanical issue, a mechanical solution works for them, sure. like a surgery. But for, for I think, more people, the majority of people, um, there is some, some of that mechanical mm -hmm. situa situation there, but right. then there's all the other things involved as well. And, uh, and those don't get addressed. They don't show up on MRIs, and they're much harder to... To treat, so yeah. um, yes, it's, it's difficult to explore all the avenues, but as long as you understand them um, and can give credence to them, it, it that in and of itself is is I think a helpful um, situation for a very complex problem. How do you, as a practitioner, and also in your in your program, how how do you um, broach the subject of um, emotional or psychological? Um, uh, factors that are that are contributing to pain um so so first i'm looking to see if there are any real pathological psychological issues yeah. and if that's the case i refer to a psychological professional somebody uh, a clinical psychologist sure. somebody who is who is trained to, to deal with that um but you know outside of that uh you know it really i try to understand where the emotion is coming from, you know, what, what is, what is behind it? You know, cause somebody has, you know, my back pain. And then I tried to get to know them, your back pain and how is that affecting your life? Well, sure. now I, I had to take three days off of work because my back was killing me and my boss said, if I take another day of work, I'm going to lose my job. And if I lose my job, I can't feed my family. And then all of a sudden you start to see like, this is real. This is this is real business here, right? This woman has a lot of reason, and certainly I can't solve all of her problems, but at least I can allow her to express them. Um, and just that catharsis can sometimes be helpful. And then let her know that I am an ally for her in 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 her you know in her trial in her in her fight with this, and and that we're going to do everything we can to get it better. So I mean, I I can't solve everyone's problems, you know, far from it. Uh, but the best I can do is really, um, you know, listen intently and try to discover or try to uncover really what's behind all of the emotion that comes yeah. up. Yeah. And it's funny. Now, I've, I've had plenty of times people on my treatment table, crying, um, not because of <laughs> my treatment, uh, but um, because they have an emotional release because we're either talking about something or sometimes just working with somebody brings out, you know, Sure. Thing. Yeah. And when I was young in my career, I used to be very uncomfortable with that. I used yeah. to try to avoid that. I would do it, you know, and, you know, it's okay. And I kind of leave the room and give yeah, them a yeah. moment, right? I'll let you get your, your yeah, yeah, get your stuff together. together. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, don't, don't cry. Way. They're there, you know, it's yeah. like, but, uh, but now I, um, 
I kind of love it, right? And it's 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 a weird it's a weird way to be, but I'm like, oh, okay, now we're getting somewhere. This is progress, right, okay? Right, right, right. Let it out. Let me know now. I can get over this emotional barrier, and we can really get down to business. And I have some younger clinicians in my in my office who are like, you're crazy. I am not <laughs> not at that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I love them, and I understand where they are. I'm like, you know, come to me in a few years. I promise you, you're gonna get over. Get over yeah. it. Get get into it. You know, if you can cry, great. And now we can move forward. Get nice. over that obstacle. Get that out of the way. Well, that's that's. I mean, first of all, that's just personal maturity and growth. And but it's also, uh, you, you know, experience and and knowing, knowing how to handle it. Basically, yeah. um, the, it also speaks to the therapeutic alliance. And and really, like by doing what you're doing, you're creating so much trust. The patient knows that they can depend on you. I and, think and a, nobody else wants to hear their story anymore. It's an absolute compliment. If someone cries in front of me or shares something with me that's so painful and stories that people have told me, yeah. I mean, uh, I'm, that's, that's I'm astounded at that, that they would confide that in me. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm flattered, uh, but it's, it's remarkable. And yeah, I, and, and I know once that we're on that level, we're that team, you know, we can do great things together. You know, it's, it's, it's fantastic. And not everybody needs that, right? Not, a, you know, people crying on my table is not like an everyday thing. Uh, but sometimes you need to, you need to get that out. And, you know, I would say that a lot of that I learned, honestly, by watching my mother. Um, you know, I worked with her for many years in, in her clinic. Yeah. And, and, and I speak to the song on my side a little bit. But the one thing that I really learned from her is what it truly means to be empathetic toward another human. What we all think that we're empathetic, and I thought I was empathetic for, for oh, yeah, of course, I feel people. And then, and then like, you see it happen on a, on a level that you're like, whoa, that is not me. Uh, that is something that I need to work on. And I've, and I've really tried, you know, and it's, uh, it's a work in progress. I'm certainly not, you know, Mother Teresa. But I've really, I've really tried to, with intention, to, to become more empathetic in, in myself, in my, in my treatment style, really understanding people and more than just their pain, but who yeah. they are, where they're coming from and the yeah. impact it makes a huge difference. Yeah, of course. And empathy does not come natural to a lot of people. Um, but it's really understanding that every person that walks in your door or that you interact with has their own trials and tribulations. I mean, and you know, it's, it's, it's not common for them, you know, particularly someone who's in pain emotionally, physically, it's, it's really challenging to find somebody who will listen to them and just be there for them. Um, and look, Dave, I feel like I could tell you anything. So, you know, maybe, maybe that's, you know, it, it's, it's a quality you have. It's, a, it's, a, it's your superpower. It's, it's amazing. To my benefit or to my detriment, I don't know. Oh, you know. I'm, about, I'm about to we cry can, myself. We can choose. <laughs> No, but I, I, have had sessions with people. Mm -hmm. I have had sessions with people yeah. where we get in, I have a whole plan of what I want to do with them. And we sit down and we spend 40 minutes just talking. Yeah, end up talking. Yeah. And then they leave and they say, I'm sorry, we didn't do anything today. And I'm like, this is the best thing we possibly could have done. Right. Sure. Uh, how am I sure. going to code this to the insurance? I'll figure that out later. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. this is the best. This is the most therapeutic thing. And again, I'm not a psychotherapist. And I'm not trying to be one. But sometimes you're just the right person at the right time. Yeah. And you just need to hear somebody and, 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 and just be there for there, them. Look, and, the, the, the combination of, of your, your knowledge and listening is who else is who else? knows what you know about their condition and is willing to listen to them. Yeah, it's so wants to listen I, I like, to them. I like to say that we are the bartenders of medicine. Um, yeah. You know, we're always there, people come in, they can unload their stuff. Well, that we're not done. there for them to talk to, but hey, you can talk to me. I'm, not, I'm working with you, you know? That's Your beautiful. Your can't do that. Um, yeah. So, That's you know, no, no booze, but... Uh, well, we, we can entertain else. them with <laughs> exercise. You know, we have other ways of... Well, get, showing them a good time. Barn, you know. yeah. But uh, yeah, so awesome. uh, yeah, and awesome. I feel, totally I feel so, um, it makes me so pleased with my career choice because that for me is such a value add that I really get to be so involved with people as opposed to, you know, I'm sure every PT thought about med school at some point and has wondered if they made the right decision or not, but it's really a very different patient interaction. And the thing that I love most about PT is that I get to be there two days a week, three days a week for months on end with somebody really take them through that journey where in medicine, you, you rarely get that opportunity. So, sure. um, and I think if we, if we use that uh, ability, right, it's a real opportunity to do, do good for people beyond their expectation. Yep. 
Well, I think we need to wrap it up with that. That was well said, man. Um, Dave Sofer never disappoints. <laughs> Thanks for having yes. me. I love being here. This is awesome, awesome, man. <laughs> That's right. That's right. The, the invitation is already in the mail. <laughs> All right, perfect. Yeah. Excited for arthritishelp.info. That's, That's right. right. Check it out. Sign up for your, for your live sessions. Um, yeah, anything else you want to add, Dave? Uh, I think I think we covered I think we covered a pretty good pretty good breath. I'm impressed uh, where where we went with this. That's I'm really impressed good. too. I mean, we started this conversation <laughs> before I hit record, and I said, "What are we going to talk about?" <laughs> we, talk about <laughs> we did all right. That was great. Um, Adrian, stellar as usual. Thank you, Dave. Welcome back anytime, and thank, uh, you. thank you for joining us on the Telept Connections podcast. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Bye.